Uh, welcome to our CRE online lessons. Um, Mr. Mogita Robert from Kisi High School, my teacher of CRE. And I've been taking you students through our online classes in CRE. These are Form 3 lessons. We are continuing with where we left last time. We started discussing unity of believers and we discussed the images that we are in the New Testament that we use to describe the unity of believers. We discussed uh, images like the church. We also discussed the people of God, the vine and the branches. We, we discussed them and we're left with the last image that we're going to discuss today and uh, we continue. But I want to encourage you, even when you are at home, my Form 3 CRE students, wherever you are in our country, be safe, but also get time to subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch our clips, play them. Where you don't understand, you can also query us. At the same time, replay them, pause them, and uh, get to understand our discussion. Today we are going to begin the, 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 last, the last image, that's the bride. And the text we are reading is Revelation chapter 21. You get time and read it, verse 1 and 2. And 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12. Read those two texts because this question is contextual. So the answers we get or what we use to discuss is based on these two biblical texts. So it's important for you to understand that. And the question that can be asked on the, the image of the bride is, describe how the unity of believers is expressed in the concept of the bride. Or, explain how the unity of believers is expressed in the concept of the, of the bride. And if you ask such, it was there in 2019, as we asked in a national exam, if you ask that, then the answers you're giving, you must relate them with Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 and 2, or... 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2. So the first point you can give is Christians are the bride. In Revelation, Christians are considered to be the bride, the bride of God. Then Jesus is the bridegroom. Jesus is the bridegroom that we are waiting to take us to a new heaven. So Christians are the bride. Then Jesus is the bridegroom. The idea here, if you ask that we have the church, the church, the image of the church, we use husband-wife relationship. Here, the, in the concept of the image of the bride, then we use the bride and the bridegroom. So, we're saying Jesus is the bridegroom. Three, Christians talk the church is to be committed to Christ as the bride is committed to the bridegroom. So, we are relating that Christians who are the church should be very committed to Christ. The same, same way that the bride who is to be married by Christ or the bridegroom should be committed to the bridegroom. So, Christians should be committed to Christ. The same way the bride is to be committed to the bridegroom. The church is loved by Christ. Christ loves the church sacrificially. The same way the bridegroom loves his bride. So the church should love Christ just the same way the bridegroom loves his bride. The church must remain pure, holy through love, through faith in Jesus Christ. As the bride keeps her purity for the for a, a bridegroom or the husband. So the church must remain pure. These are teachings that the church must remain pure and holy and uh, have that love for Christ or faith in Christ Jesus. The same way the bride keeps her purity for the bridegroom or the husband. That relationship must come out. The committed Christians will be taken to a new home. That's what Revelation says. The committed Christians will be taken to a new home, to heaven, just as the bride is taken to the home by the husband. So the husband or the bridegroom takes the bride home. The same way, the committed Christians will be taken to a new home, that is heaven. Those are committed Christians will be taken to a new home, that is heaven. Another point is that the union between Christ and the church will be everlasting, just as the union between the bride and the groom is permanent, till death, till death does them part. So, the union between Christ and the church uh, is permanent, should be everlasting. Just as the union between the bride and the bridegroom is permanent. That is uh, the, last, uh, the last image that we discuss. So, it's important for you to understand these images well. These the people of God, the church, 
the vine and the branches and the bride understand them and even the body of Christ understand them well and read this text for you to understand how we relate because most times you ask to explain these images so the relationship must come out if it's the body of Christ you must bring the relationship how the unity of believers is expressed in these images we want to move now to the application part of what we have done both from the gifts of the Holy Spirit and unity of believers and uh, the first thing we want to look at the factors that undermine the church unity what are these factors that undermine church unity today or what are the causes of disunity in the church in Kenya today what causes the church to be in conflict in Kenya today one of the reasons why we have you can be asked an exam explain the factors that undermine church unity today or explain the causes of disunity in the church in Kenya today one is leadership rankles we have succession succession rankles in our churches where a bishop is retiring and a new bishop is coming in in different churches we have leadership rankles those who want to succeed this bishop who is dying or not who has died or has retired so there are leadership rankles and this brings disunity because there are different camps supporting different people for this leadership formation of splinter groups between the church churches are splitting people get revelations or at the same time if we have a, an issue in church the church is growing and people think like they can split the church and go have a smaller one where they can have influence or where they can control the resources so splinter churches are, are coming up even if within the Pentecostal churches we still have so many of them even within from the mainstream churches misunderstanding on the use of the spiritual gifts this brings disunity people who have different gifts of the holy spirit like those who are speaking in tongues those who can healing uh, miracles so people misunderstand the prophecy they bring misunderstanding to the church and because of this pride they end up causing disunity in the church because they think they are special those who have the gifts of the holy spirit abuse of the freedom of worship people abuse the freedom of worship in the constitution we have we have freedom of worship you can express it the way you want so because of this they want to move from their churches and have their own because the constitution allows them to come up with different churches. We have doctrinal differences. This brings disunity. In a way, the different churches have their different doctrines, like the doctrine of baptism, the doctrines of um, the doctrine of the Holy Communion. So they have different approaches to how they do this, even marriage. So because of these doctrinal differences. So, uh, different churches have uh, different issues, and because of these differences, these different people go, uh, they don't come together and understand each other. Development of cults. People have developed cults, and uh, their belief system is not known. This brings disunity because people are persuaded and think like these cults are true, but they aren't. You remember, I don't want to give examples of uh, these cults. Uh, you know examples of uh, cults that we have in our country and people who have been convicted with these cults and they think like it is it is true worship that brings conflicts in the church we have different interpretation of the Bible people read uh, the Bible and understand it differently and because of this different interpretation of the Bible so what has come up is it brings a division if I have a, a different interpretation of how baptism should be Another one has a different interpretation. What happens is that we go different ways. Our ideologies are different. So we go different ways and that brings disunity in the church. We have conservativeness in the church. The old generation and the young generation, the way of dressing, the way the conservative approach, if even if you are, the dancing styles in the church are changing. And uh, this was not happening before. So the old generation that was having different belief system, when it comes to the new generation, the way we are worshipping, of course, we are worshipping the same God. But because of change in science and technology and other things, the worship has, 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 the worship has been different a bit. So this has brought differences within the church and disunity at the same time. Ways in which Christians can promote unity among themselves in Kenya. Apart from having uh, disunity in our church today, how can we now promote as Christians, promote the unity 
of our church? How can we bring the church together? And the question can be explain ways or give ways in which Christians can promote unity among themselves in Kenya today. One is only joint prayers. They can have interdenominational prayers. Call people of different churches to come for prayers. This brings unity among members. That's you understand each other, that we are worshipping the same God. This brings unity. Second, having joint stand against injustice in the society. The church, if we have corruption in our society today, the church should come out as one, as a whole, to condemn this injustice of corruption. So that brings unity. The second, they work together to promote educational uh, programs in the country. The church is involved in uh, coming up when there is a curriculum being developed. There are moral issues that are raised and the church comes up to participate, to promote education and programs in the country. So that is a way to promote unity because the church has a common stand. Joining together in the training of the clergy, e.g. priests. So they train the clergy, the clergy are religious people who work in churches. So they have opened up training colleges for the clergy, the people who are preachers. So they train them in a common uh, place, or they can even call them for seminars for the religious, supporting the needy irrespective of their denomination. This is a sign of unity that they go to children's homes, these people who are needy, they support them regardless of their denomination. So this is a sign of unity in the church. A Christian organization should employ Christians from different denominations. This should happen. You don't discriminate when you are employing. Christian organizations should not discriminate and employ Christians from their own denomination. So they can have, if it's a uh, Catholic church, they can employ even the Protestants, even the SDS, and vice versa also. So this uh, denotes that they have unity. Christians should unite in provision of medical services. So different churches, they provide, they come together, uh, pool the resources, then establish uh, hospitals. They provide medical services, respecting one's one another's doctrinal positions. We should not differ because of doctrinal differences on how we approach issues. In fact, we should respect the different doctrinal positions of other churches. If it's a doctrine of baptism in a different church, just appreciate what they do because the significance or the meaning it remains the same. So that is what uh, brings, those are the ways that we Christians can use to promote unity in Kenya today. What are the ways in which freedom of worship is misused in Kenya today? We say that freedom of worship is enshrined in our Kenyan constitution. But what are the ways? Give ways in which freedom of worship is misused in Kenya today. How do we misuse the, the, the freedom that the constitution gives us? One, people start churches in order to earn money. Because of freedom of worship, you can begin churches, you are allowed to, to begin churches. So people start churches in order to earn money. They start churches for the, the sole interest not to convert people to Christ, but to earn money. It has become public nuisance. Preaching and singing loudly, even near residential areas, people misuse this freedom because they go to residential areas in form of uh, preaching loud, putting loud music. You are alone there, speakers, loud speakers. That is uh, misusing that freedom of worship. Interpreting the scriptures to suit their individual interests. I don't want to be a little in church here, but uh, people preach for to gain their spiritual interest. They, they interpret scriptures, give so that you are blessed. They emphasize on such scriptures, uh, such that uh, panda and babe gospel, that is something that people are interpreting scriptures to suit their own interest. Even when they are in trouble, they even say that even Jesus Christ was in trouble because maybe they are in trouble because of their own making. This is what uh, can result into misuse of worship. Images of cults, devil worship, because of um, you can't really demarcate which is the true worship and uh, not true worship. That's why we have images of cults and devil worship because people think they still use the Bible and uh, pretend, but their, their practices are evil. Worship has been publicized. People make it public. And they advertise because of freedom of worship. So this is uh, something that has led to misuse of freedom of worship. We want to move to the role. Uh, 
ways in which Christians can prevent the divisions in the church today. We have divisions, we have disunity in the church. How can we prevent divisions in the church of God, the church of Christ today? One, treating each other with love. Love all the people because Jesus Christ is love. God is love. So please, let us treat, if you treat all people with love, you don't uh, treat others with hate and others with love, this will bring, prevent divisions in the church because those who feel like they're not loved can move away and they can divide themselves and go to elsewhere. Avoid discrimination. Do not discriminate people in the church in terms of tribe, in terms of race, in terms of class. So if you treat people equally without uh, segregation, they will feel like they are together. Then they will prevent divisions in the church. Preach. Teach the word of God. Teach the Bible truths. Tell them the truth of the Bible, that Jesus is love and loves us all. So that one will prevent divisions. Assisting those in need, the less fortunate, the needy. Assist those who are in need, they will appreciate you. They will not run away from the church and feel like they are, they are not recognized. So assist those in need, the less fortunate, the needy. Practice practicing humility and avoiding arrogance. And this is something that is peculiar. Some servants of God are extremely humble. And this attracts people to the church and uh, deters uh, uh, divisions from taking place. And this is important that we need to have humility and uh, be humble so that people uh, will, uh, will come together. Respect the opinions of other people even when the opinion uh, is, is, not, is not what you would want to hear. Respect other people's opinion. Give them a hearing. Let them say, discuss openly issues affecting the church. This will... Uh, deter divisions in the church in a way that people are listened to. But if you don't listen to them, people will revolt. Pray for one another. Problems affecting the church. Pray because God answers prayer. And tell God the problems are bringing divisions in the church. And this will be uh, uh, prevent divisions. Practicing transparent leadership styles. Let us be transparent. Let us, let us not be opaque then people cannot see beyond us. People cannot see through us. Let us be transparent. This is about the church budget. Put it for people to understand and let them be aware. Follow the church doctrine. Educate members of the church procedure and constitution. Let them know that this is what is there. This is what we do in our church. So that they don't criticize and they don't know. They are not in the dark. Repent. If you have done a mistake, ask for forgiveness. Even the church leaders, accept the mistakes. Take liability. And all, so that you are, people know that you have repented. If there was an issue, you've repented, you've asked for forgiveness. Conduct guidance and counseling. There are people who have different issues in the church who can bring conflicts. Counsel them. Do counseling so that they, they, they get to understand themselves and uh, reflect and have answers for their problems. Preparing a budget annually to ensure that the resources are well utilized. Most times, people think. Those who bring conflicts think that the church resources have been misappropriated. So have an open budget where you read and people know that this is what you have been doing. We want to move to the next subtopic. They're all played by the youth in the church in Kenya today. This is an application question that will be tested in an exam before. What role? You can even be asked the role of women. Today we are saying what are the role of the youth in the church. And these points, most of them can still apply in the role of women, the role of men in the church today. What, what roles do uh, the youth play in the church in Kenya today? One, the youth lead in prayer and worship. You see energetic young men and women praising God through song. So they lead in praise and worship. They participate in the church choir playing instruments. We see them playing the keyboard, playing the guitar, and other instruments. So they play, they participate in the church choir. They clean and decorate the church. They come to the church, they clean the church, they decorate the church. So that happens. They preach, so teach the word of God. They preach. Sometimes you, you get youth service, whereby the youth are leading the service in the church. So they teach, they preach. So the youth also, they preach in the church. They get and counsel members. Some youths have been trained in guidance and counseling. 
So the Kai Guide and Council members, they participate in ushering collective offerings. Some of these youth you say in the church, they participate in uh, ushering, they collect the offering, they usher members to the church, they collect offerings in the church, in churches where uh, people collect offering. Other in other churches you go, they, uh, uh, some, some basket is put in a, in a central place and you get, you give your tithes and offerings. But in some churches, the youth, uh, even other people can collect the offering. They participate in church projects. They also contribute financially. They give their money because some of these youths are also working. They read the Bible. So the, the, the youth can also read the Bible they, they, in the church if they are given a chance to read the Bible. They pray and intercede for the church. They also do that intercession. They pray for the church. We move. Uh, so that is the role. And I've told you that it can be asked in a different way. It can be asked to, to give. Uh, the role of men, the role of women, most of those points can still apply. Uh, challenges that hinder the church from carrying out its mission effectively in Kenya today. Again, this question has been asked. Outline, explain challenges that hinder the church from carrying out its mission effectively in the church. The mission of the church is to convert people to Christ, preach about Christ. What are these challenges that affect, hinder the church from carrying out its mission effectively in the, in the church? One. The church does not have adequate finances to carry out its mission. Sometimes we need to finance the, the, the missionaries. We need to finance these people to go and preach. So sometimes we have uh, inadequate finances. There are few members who are committed, dedicated to the work. Sometimes uh, the work is too much, but the people who are committed to the work are so few. The harvest is huge, but the servants are few. Some church leaders lack knowledge in the scriptures, so they can't preach. They are the church leaders, but they can't preach. They are lack knowledge. God has not given them the revelation or inspiration of the word of God. Some church leaders have poor leadership skills, poor management. Now they carry out their missions. So they end up differing with people. So poor leadership skills. We need to seminar our leaders on leadership skills. Interference from other religions, non-believers. Sometimes you get politics in the church, but the people who are doing this are not believers. They are People from outside, so they're not believers, so they interfere uh, with the mission of the church. There are doctrinal differences among denominations, like baptism. There are people who immerse, there are people who just uh, smear. Different uh, doctrinal differences. Doctrinal differences among the among denominations in, uh, in churches. That brings a problem, because you're preaching the same gospel, but your, doct your doctrines are different. Due to selfishness, greed for power, wealth, leadership, rankles, there's selfishness. People are greedy for money, for power in the church, leadership, rankles. This deters the spreading of the gospel because the interest of people in the church is different from the mission of the church. Negative influence from the mass media. The mass media has affected uh, the, the way the way you see people, different people in the mass media, in social media, the way the, some pastors have been portrayed negatively. So this hinders people from accepting the gospel because some have been found in immoral behaviors, others in uh, very compromising things. So this makes it very difficult. Political interference in their work. Sometimes the state politicians influence, they come even donate a lot of money they come for politics in the churches. So, and uh, this affects the, the mission of the church. Poor infrastructure, insecurity. Sometimes moving from one place to another to preach the gospel is a problem because of poor infrastructure. There's insecurity and sometimes language barrier because where you're going, you, you're not an expert in all the languages. This affects. Due to all forms of discrimination, we have discrimination, and this discrimination could be uh, tribalism and others. This makes people, this makes it very challenging. You go to preach uh, in the Kisi community and you're not a Kisi, they discriminate you. You go to the Luo community, you are discriminated if you're not a Luo. You go to the Kikuyus, the same, the Kalenji is the same, you're discriminated. This makes it very difficult for us to spread the word of God. We want to move to the factors that bind members together. What are the factors that bring unity? The church has one body. We have uh, said this, factors bring unity in the church today. You can have praying together, 
sharing meals together with people, helping the needy. This brings people together and they, they, they it's like the uh, factor that bring unity, celebrating the Holy Communion together in the church. We celebrate the Holy Communion. Studying the Word of God together like we have Bible discussions, uh, Bible study, preaching the gospel of God together, you go for a mission, preach together, acknowledging, respecting their leaders. You respect your leaders in the church, this brings unity. Forming social, social welfare groups to assist one another. Then we have upholding the same doctrines. These factors uh, will uh, bring unity in the church of Christ. Then we have uh, want to move to the factors, how the gift of love is expressed today. Of course, it's an application question from when we're studying the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Remember, we are summarizing this topic. How is the gift of love expressed today? Through praying together. If you love one another, then you pray together as a family, helping the needy. This is a show of love. You help the needy. Sharing meals. You come together to partake of meals. You together. This is a, a way of uh, showing love coexisting together regardless of our status and denominations. We live together and we love each other together regardless of the status be it you are rich, be it you are poor or the church you are going be it you are Catholic, be it you are Protestant spreading the word of God to others, the gospel to others accepting the teachings of Jesus and forgiving others. When you forgive others the love is expressed we move to the almost the second, the second last uh, thing that we want to do. Um, we want to move to the second last subtopic factor that have led to the increase of Christian denomination in Kenya. Why are churches mushrooming? Where why are denominations coming up? Very many of them desire to be free from the missionary control. The first churches had missionary control. Who brought them? Like the Catholic Church those mainstream churches. So the, the desire that we are free from them, we begin our own churches, apart from those that were brought by, by missionaries. Another one is leadership wrangles. The question will be as outline factors that have led to the increase of Christian denominations in Kenya. The second one is leadership wrangles. When you have leadership wrangles, you think like you want to be in leadership and other people are blocking you, you will establish your own church, then you become the leader of that church. Different interpretation of the Bible. You interpret the Bible differently, about baptism and that becomes part of your doctrine and you differ from the mainstream church. You move out. Lack of role models. You, you discover that where you are, the people you are under are not becoming role models to you. So you think they are bad role models or they are bad. So you go to establish your own rise of revival ministries. We have a revival spirit like what Martin Luther King did. So these revival ministries have come up because of the, the rise of revival ministries. So different denominations came up because of revival. Disagreement on the mode of worship. People disagree on the mode of worship. How are we supposed to worship? How are we supposed to dress? Uh, this disagreement brings up a different church. Discrimination also uh, makes people to have different church in terms of social class, race, and even tribalism. So people want to form their own churches. Uh, the Kalenjin, the Kisses, they are different churches because they are discriminated where they are. Such of spiritual satisfaction, they think like they are not be satisfied spiritually, so they want to go and have their own churches where they can be satisfied. Freedom of worship. Freedom of worship is enshrined in the Kenyan constitution. So that's, this makes people to come up with different churches. We have permissiveness in society whereby there is a lot of uh, lack of morals. Uh, so people can do what they want to do their what they want to do. So they come up with that because it's freedom on the side. Greed for material gain. People establish their churches for material gain. This is also very uh, common, but it's not good. The last subtopic we want to do, I uh, want to move very fast, and I want to wish you well as you come to the end of this topic. Please go through this, subscribe to our channel. The fact that in the effective cooperation among Christians in Kenya, why are Christians not coming together? We have seen this because of greed for power competition to win more converts so they cannot cooperate because they want each church wants to, to, to have their own. We have material uh, gain. They want to gain material discrimination, political interference, different interpretation of the Bible. This has come. We have explained this before. Images of cults, lack of equity. And I want to thank you for, for listening to me. We have poor infrastructure, language barrier, lack of money, inadequate uh, funds. This 
hinders effective cooperation among Christians in Kenya. My students, I wish you well. These are good material for you. Listen to them, watch them, replay them, and understand them. If there's a query, you can come back to us and ask us. Thank you. May God bless you.